So um, again, welcome um, Zotio with the small business team and uh, a few things to know. So in addition to recording today's presentation, we are expecting to do additional presentations like this in the future as we learn more about the implementation of the cannabis legislation. Um, cameras and microphones for attendees have been disabled, so uh, please use the chat feature to ask any questions you may have. We would love to know who is joining us today, um, so if you could put your name and role in the chat, that would be great. All right, so today we're going to be providing um, a high-level update on the 2023 cannabis bill and what it means for business owners and entrepreneurs interested in this industry. We are still in the very early stages of implementation. So as you'll hear, while there are things we do know from the text of the legislation, there is still a lot of detail to be worked out. We'll hold time for questions at the end and we'll be sharing ways to stay up to date and contact the presenters that you're hearing from today. So first up, I'm gonna pass um, the presentation to Steve Huser from the city's Intergovernmental Relations Department with a brief overview of the legislation. Thanks, so uh, my name is Steve Huser. I am a government relations representative with the city's Intergovernmental Relations Department. Um, I monitored this piece of legislation and interacted with the, the state legislature on this bill as it moved through the legislature last session. Um, if we want to move to the next slide. So the Minnesota cannabis um, uh, legalization bill uh, did legalize adult use cannabis in the state of Minnesota. Um, it as of August 1st, it allows for possession and consumption of cannabis for adults that are 21 years of age and older. Um, it allows individuals to grow plants at home. Um, uh, individuals are allowed to have up to eight plants for uh, being adults at any one time. And it maintains the current medical marijuana system. Uh, retail growing and sales are not expected until uh, sometime in 2025. The uh, legalization bill also establishes a regulatory framework. Uh, so part of this legislation, the state has created the State Office of Cannabis Management which will be in charge of regulating the cannabis industry. So while some of the details of legalization are codified in statute, many of the details about uh, how this law will be implemented will be developed in the coming months or begin to be developed in the coming months by the Office of Cannabis Management. The uh, new law describes the authority of the state and the local, local governments, in, including municipalities. The state will be issuing commercial licenses they will be setting the industry rules, uh, managing the criminal records expungement related to cannabis process and other uh, and, and more um, parts of that process. Cities will be able to register local businesses, uh, but we will not be licensing those businesses. Cities are also responsible for conducting compliance checks and setting local zoning ordinances. Cities may also set caps on the number of cannabis businesses, um, and this is uh, based on uh, by population for what the floor of specific businesses are, and they may also pass ordinances related to public consumption. The state sets taxation rates, so cannabis taxes, cannabis products will be taxed at 10% at the state level, and no additional sales taxes will be allowed at the local level. Um, so while the cities may not have a local tax. Uh, because we do register these businesses, there will be the allowance of a, regist a local registration fee. And that is the, the, the overview of the legalization law. Thanks. And Steve, before we move on to the next section, um, I do see in the chat that um, we've got some uh, tech challenges from our attendees. At least one person is not able to hear the presentation. So I would just ask if there are others, um, if you can hear the presentation, if you could just put in the chat if you're hearing it. Um, I am going to continue to try to uh, look at the settings and see if I can adjust that. Um, so. 
it looks like some city staff are able to present. Are there any non city staff that are able to hear what's going on? All right, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the mic for attendees. And this may. May help that I'm not sure. Um, let's see, let's save that. All right, I'm going to test this again. So for folks who are joining us, um, community members, uh, if you are able to hear the presentation, um, if you could just let us know in the chat. Um, if not, um, I may need to ask folks to uh, potentially try uh, calling in. I don't know if there's anybody else on this call who's had this happen before. All right, I'm going to copy the phone information into the chat. Um, let's see, here we go. If you are not. Thanks all for your patience as we try to sort this out. All right, Joe, I can see that you've re entered the meeting. Um, are you able to hear us now? All right, Joe, you are able to hear us. That is great. Um, so it sounds like, uh, and if there, I'll just put some notes in the chat for some troubleshooting if you're not able to hear. Um, obviously, you won't know that if. Um, you are hearing me now. So um, with that, I'm just going to keep us moving along and um, we will troubleshoot as we go. Thanks all for your patience. All right, licensing. So for um, cannabis businesses, we're going to hand this over to uh, Amy Lingo, who is our manager for business licensing. Good afternoon, everyone. So my section will be fairly short and sweet, um, as it's been clearly noted that the state of um, department, the Office of Cannabis Management, they are the ones who will be list, um, issuing licenses. And there are not currently any licenses for um, available other than the dispensary licenses that already existed for the medical and um, the low potency hemp edibles that registration is available so those things are allowed to be sold sold currently but um all licenses will be issued through the state there will not be an additional city license if you wanted to sell something like say devices at this time you would need a tobacco license um at this particular moment but for the the cannabis licenses going forward they should be issued around 2025 early to mid 2025 and that would be directly from the state Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, so one of the key roles for cities is going to be zoning and land use. Um, so I'm going to hand that off to Sarah Roman. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Roman. I am a senior city planner here at the city of Minneapolis in our planning division within CPED. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, so one of the most common questions we have been receiving in the planning division is, where can my future business operate within the city of Minneapolis? Where the city plays a role with the state licensing process for locating businesses will be through a land use compatibility statement. A land use compatibility statement will be required by the Office of Cannabis Management at the state as a condition of licensure to businesses. So this land use compatibility statement will tell the Office of Cannabis Management whether or not a proposed business uh, is in compliance with local zoning regulations within the city. There are several state licenses that already operate in this manner. So, for example, our child care centers that are licensed by the Minnesota Department of Human Services. In order to be able to respond to the land use compatibility statement from the state, the city needs to draft zoning regulations. The legislation passed by the state 
allows cities to adopt reasonable restrictions based on time, place, and manner of operations of a cannabis business, provided that those regulations do not impose a blanket prohibition on establishment or operation. So there are several provisions around spacing placed into the state statute. Cities may prohibit the operation of cannabis businesses within 1,000 feet of schools. Um, they can prohibit cannabis businesses within 500 feet of a daycare, residential treatment facility, or an attraction within a public park that's frequented by minors. So things like playgrounds or athletic fields. And within those three categories of time, place, and manner, it's up to local municipalities to develop zoning ordinances to regulate the adult use cannabis industry. At this point in time, the city is still in an internal research phase. Um, we are looking at zoning and planning best practices for cannabis legalization throughout the United States. And so we are looking closely at case studies from similar cities, um, similar states, um, uh, case studies where recreational cannabis is legal. Um, I believe 17 states in the District of Columbia um, have recreational cannabis legalization. So we're certainly not the first state or city to to deal with uh, legalizing adult use cannabis. And we believe that we can learn a lot from these other examples. Um, over the winter, likely beginning in early 2024, January, February 2024, we will begin our public outreach process. Um, so the hope is to have public meetings and or other online engagement like surveys to gather feedback on key issues. Um, we would hope to meet with neighborhood groups, Minneapolis residents, um, and do some sort of targeted engagement with the cannabis business industry and community, um, including potential cannabis business operators and existing low potency THC CBD business owners um, on the retail side, but as well as on the growth production and processing side. Um, we will also be engaging with our elected officials um, to understand their hopes and concerns for legal adult use cannabis in the city. So that would be like the mayor's office and city council members offices. Um, when this outreach is scheduled, the dates will be posted on the city's cannabis webpage. Um, they will also be shared in the city's um, newsletter that's going to be circulated. And I believe we're sharing that information at the end of the presentation for where you can find, find that webpage and sign up for that newsletter. Um, and then once our co-development team has concluded their research, we will begin drafting our zoning ordinance amendment. Our zoning code is the piece of Minneapolis code that regulates what you can build and how you can use a property or a parcel. So for example, some of the city's zoning districts allow one kind of use, like residential only, um, while most of our zoning districts allow a mixture of uses. So for example, commercial and industrial or commercial and residential. Our zoning code amendment process uh, begins at city council and will go through the standard process for ordinance amendments at the city. Um, so we'll make presentations to our city planning commission, which involves public hearings, um, hearings before committees of the city council, and then the final step is um, a vote by city council and uh, ratification by the mayor. So that process will also involve a public outreach process and public hearings um, where any members of the public are invited to speak and provide input. Um, the aim for this amendment process is to conclude by mid-2024 so that potential businesses will have guidance ahead of OCM beginning to issue licenses in 2025. Um, so again, the goal is to have a zoning code amendment adopted by mid-2024 that will put all of our zoning regulations in place at the city. Um, this would tell potential business owners where their cannabis business could locate and any additional restrictions or standards that may apply. Uh, in terms of what these regulations might look like, uh, we do not at this point have any specific guidance to share. Um, as mentioned earlier, we are looking at several examples from similar cities across the country which have handled things very differently. Um, Oregon has handled things very differently from Colorado that's handled things very differently from New York. Um, and so we're trying to learn from what those states and cities within those states have done um, to understand how we can draft regulations that both support the cannabis industry um, while aligning with the values and needs of our community members, um, such as ensuring public safety and addressing any public health concerns. Uh, um, some of the potential tools that are commonly used um, are spacing from uses like schools that the state statute included um, or residential district boundaries um, or spacing between uses. For example, a minimum distance between two cannabis businesses or two cannabis um, grow operations. Um, this is similar to how the city handles licenses for liquor stores or tobacco shops currently. Some cities also use the conditional use permit process in order to attach conditions. 
um, and other cities have ad additional regulation standards like um, window requirements or lighting or signage. Um, so these are kind of all options that are being studied to see um, what is the right fit for the city of Minneapolis. And between our research and public outreach, we are confident that we will draft an ordinance that, that will suit the city well. Um, so if there are any questions related to zoning, obviously please drop them in the chat and we will address them at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Great, thank you, Sarah. So at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump back in to share a little bit about supportive resources for um, entrepreneurs interested in getting into the cannabis industry. So one thing to know is that our team, the small business team at the city of Minneapolis, uh, will be an informational resource available to business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, but one element of the state legislation is setting up financing and uh, technical assistance programs. So these are programs that will be run through DEED, uh, the Department for um, uh, Employment and Economic Development at the state, and are expected to be live sometime in 2024. Um, there is some information on expected financing programs, uh, can grow uh, for growers and can start up for retail businesses uh, on DEED's website. Um, however, there are not currently applications um, available. Uh, again, that'll be sometime next year. At the city, we're also looking to um, develop some targeted technical assistance tools, so uh, consulting services, uh, essentially, for uh, local small businesses looking to get into the cannabis industry. And we also expect to be able to go live with that additional programming in 2024. Um, so with that, we're going to kind of shift gears away from uh, future cannabis entrepreneurs and we're going to share some information for current business owners about how the new legislation may be impacting your business. So I'm going to uh, pass this back to uh, Amy to share details about the uh, on-site consumption. Thank you, Zoe. So on-site consumption, currently, um, there are two rules that Minneapolis are involved in greatly. So the Minnesota Clean Air Indoor Act. That bans all smoking, which includes vaping of any sort of products, cannabis or otherwise. So that is that is forbidden um, and will not be allowed even once the licenses get issued. Um, outdoor cannabis consumption at businesses may be permitted at licensed cannabis businesses in the future. Again, that is not an activity that is currently permitted. Um, uh, so, yeah, there's going to be no smoking inside and then businesses will have the right to decide for themselves if they would allow it on the patio, even once it is permitted full on that business can have that right to choose if they want to permit it or not. Um, just like they can say no smoking on their their patio, that would be all for all no smoking. So on site consumption for cannabis products at this point um, is kind of clear at that. Right now, none of that stuff is currently legal, so you can't smoke it inside at all. Great. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. And so um, moving away from uh, the newly legalized adult use cannabis to uh, the lower potency hemp products that have been uh, were previously made legal um, and hand it over to Adam Kalahar with our city's health department. Can you guys hear and see me? Sure can. Some perfect. So yeah, basically um, what we wanted to touch on from, um, well, first off, I'm Adam Kalahar, I'm an environmental health specialist with City of Minneapolis. Um, and uh, what we want businesses to know about currently is um, as far as what a health inspector is gonna look at, we come into your restaurant, coffee shop, uh, grocery store, um, the previously legal products um, that were legalized back in July of 2022, those can still be sold. Um, what we mentioned earlier, you must actually, as of October 1st, you were supposed to have registered with the state. Um, that registration takes about 60 seconds to complete. It's very easy. Um, so if you have not done that yet, um, we should have a resource or a link to that somewhere. Um, and then we also, I don't know if we want to turn it back to Amy right away and then come back to me regarding the on-site consumption of, of lower potency edibles. That's fine. So lower potency hemp edibles, if you have, would like to ha allow for on-site consumption of those. So the seltzer, the gummies, whatnot, you want to allow your customers to be able to consume them on-site. 
you would need a license that is covered under Minnesota State Statute 340A, which is what's known as an on-sale license. On-sale liquor, on-sale wine, on-sale beer, uh, which is a 3-2 beer license, um, in order to be able to allow for that. Most places that we've seen that um, sell seltzers like that already have one. Breweries have it on sale. Most of your restaurants that have alcohol, they already have an on sale license. But if you wish to allow for the consumption of lower potency hemp products and you do not currently have an on sale license, you'll need to get one and you would still need to be able to make that to qualify for that license. Um, there are zoning requirements about where they can be. There are distance requirements from like um, churches and schools. Um, and then most importantly, there is a food requirement you are required to have to be a restaurant. So you would have to meet those requirements to get that. But if you do meet those requirements or can make those requirements and you would like to offer on site consumption, then um, we could work with you to get that kind of license in order to be able to have that use. And that is effective now. Thank you. Perfect. Yep. And that is, yeah, like I think we have on the slide here too, an example would be maybe a coffee shop that traditionally did not need that type of licensing in the past, but they want to offer um, these other uh, products, then they, yeah, they need to go down that avenue of getting that type of licensure. If you want to go to the next one, there we go. Perfect. The main thing that we want to get across here um, as far as um, restaurant and food inspectors is um, any THC or CBD containing product is considered a standalone product and cannot be mixed with any other foods. Um, the moment you add um, THC or CBD or any other cannabinoid to a um, traditional food ingredient, you add it to sugar or water or ice, you, um, you don't have food anymore. Um, you have an edible cannabinoid product. Um, if we encounter people adding um, THC tinctures or sugars or um, THC or CBD to say um, coffees or drinks um, pouring over ice, that's considered an adulterated food product. And that is um, the city has some authority to step in and discontinue that practice. Um, most of the, um, a, a lot of the enforcement is gonna come from the state side um, once the Office of Cannabis Management gets up and running. Um, but as far as um, a food being considered adulterated, um, that's what we have when we're combining THC or CBD with a food product. Um, and we do have um, authority to, to remedy that. Um, also with the, uh, I believe it was just with the August 1st new um, bill, um, there was a gray area surrounding some artificially derived cannabinoids. Um, Examples would be HHC, uh, THCO, and THCP. Those, I don't know if they lived in a gray area since um, July 2022 up until now, but those are now illegal. That's written into um, the new stuff or the new uh, legislation. So um, just be aware that check your products on the shelves. Um, anything containing any of those um, ingredients are considered illegal. And then we do have, um, there's a really good fact sheet out there um, through the state on uh, hemp derived cannabinoid product compliance that guy goes through all this in a little more in depth as well. Great, thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, as more information becomes available about what the impacts are of cannabis legalization, um, there are several ways to stay up to date. So the first key website I would point to is the Office of Cannabis Management. Uh, this is the state agency that is charged with being the primary regulator um, of this industry. Even as this office is being staffed up, they are updating that page regularly. So I would encourage you to, to check in there. Um, next, you also see the city of Minneapolis does have a cannabis specific website. Um, and here you'll find much of the same information that you heard today as well as Minneapolis specific information as it becomes available. Uh, additionally, there's a sign up for a cannabis email newsletter and contact information for more questions. Um, one direct point of contact I would point to for folks that are interested in the business side of the cannabis industry is the small business team. Uh, we can be a first point of contact for uh, your cannabis business questions. And as needed, we'll connect you to, to uh, more of a subject matter expert in one of our various departments, 
whether that is a licensure question or a health question. Um, but we, we can be a, a front door to help get you to the right place. Um, so with that, I'm going to just say thank you and move us to Q&A. So if you are um, joining us uh, and have questions about any of the content that we shared today, I would encourage you to put your question in the chat. Um, or I believe I, it is now set that you may be able to unmute yourself to uh, ask your question that way. So we'll give it just a moment and see who's got questions. You're muted, so. Thank you, Dorothea. Yes, uh, there there is a recording of this presentation that we will be uh, sharing out. All right, well, I am not seeing anything additional in the chat. Um, but again, uh, we will be sharing out this presentation um, as well as uh, recording and links to the relevant websites. Uh, please do reach out with follow-up questions if you think of them after today. And uh, again, thank you and I appreciate your time.